Shalom, Haverim. Hello, friends. It's so good to see you again. Today is Shabbat Shabaking. We're going to be making some challah today. And with me, you might recognize her as one of my daughters from the last interactive. We have Mia. She's Hi. back with us. Mia loves cooking and baking. So this was a perfect activity for her to join me for. So we decided for our first Shabbat Shabaking, we would make Challah, because that is a key ingredient to have for a wonderful Shabbat meal. Um, we found this wonderful mini challah recipe. We decided to make a mini challah because we are using Lev's mini oven that we brought home with us to use for this occasion. Instead of one mini challah, though, we are actually going to make shte chalot, two challahs. Mia, why is it important for us to make shte halot for Shabbat? Well, we need two halas because when the Israelites were traveling in the desert, God on Shabbat gave them two times the amount of food so they didn't have to work on Shabbat. So that's why we have the two halas. Nice. You're right. God gave them two portions of manna. So we're going to make shte halot, two halas. So here are all of our ingredients. We posted the, uh, the recipe also, so you can make sure to gather your ingredients. We need some yeast, which helps our bread rise, which is something we don't use on Passover because we don't want our bread to rise. We need some warm water. We need some vegetable oil, some sugar, some salt, the egg, which we're gonna have to go get, some flour, some and yep, yeah, go ahead. Definitely some bowls. Definitely some bowls. Oh, and also what's important? Table cups. <laughs> Measuring spoons, <laughs> yes, or the table cups. <laughs> and you can decide what kinds of things you want as either toppings or inserts in your kala. I believe we might make one sweet kala, so chocolate chips are good for and that. One with sesame seeds. Terrific. Okay, so and let's yeah. Did you want to say something else? And maybe someone with the brown sugar. Oh, the cinnamon sugar? Or cinnamon or brown, sugar. But you could use brown sugar too. Okay, so it says first that in a small bowl, we are going to dissolve the yeast into the warm water. So Mia, can you find us the warm water and pour that into the bowl? Right here. Perfect. Satisfying. It's so satisfying, that sound. Did you guys hear that sound when you poured your water in? Okay, now we need one and a quarter teaspoons active dry yeast. So if I have the one teaspoon here, what other measuring um, the spoon do we quarter. need? The quarter. The quarter one. Okay, so I think it's that teeny one there. Does it say one quarter, one fourth? Yes, it does. Okay, so we're going to do one teaspoon. Do you want to put that one in? Sure. And a quarter teaspoon. We'll measure that over here just in case some falls out of this teeny thing. Okay. Oh, thanks. Okay, so now do you know what we forgot? Mm -hmm. Spoon. Spoons, but we're gonna use this while I go get a spoon and some eggs. Sorry, it started to smell good. Great. Okay, we're back. Mia's still mixing now with the spoons that we remembered to get, and we got the eggs that we'd forgotten to get. We also remembered that we had these awesome like aprons that we got from our partners, who we love. Who's our partner? PJ Library. PJ Library or, or, or PJ Our Way. Great program. Um, so we have our aprons on now. We also made sure to wash our hands really well before we started baking, and we hope you did too, especially right now, but it's always important for at least 20 seconds, right? To scrub yeah. your hands with soap and warm water. Some people like to sing songs while they do it, yeah. right? What song do you do? I sing the ABCs. ABCs, you can do ABCs. Old MacDonald had a farm. Yeah. We could even do like Jewish songs, yeah. Hebrew songs, yeah, anyway. Okay, so Mia definitely has dissolved the yeast and warm water yes, now. I so we are now going to add into that two tablespoons vegetable oil. We're in luck because we actually have a measuring spoon that is a two tablespoon. Can you believe it? Oh my goodness. So and we're going to use. If you don't, you use one tablespoon two times. That's great. That is good math. Okay. So we're going to pour that two tablespoons of oil in, vegetable oil. We are going to add four 
teaspoon. So we need our one teaspoon again. Where did that go? Right here. Oh, here. Oh, we must have brought two of those. Perfect. Okay. Mm -hmm. Four teaspoons of sugar. So here we go. Count with me, everybody. One. Ready? Oh. Your turn. Okay. Two. Three. And four. four. How would we have counted that in Hebrew? Let's see. Echad, Shaim, Shalosh, Arba. Okay, we have our four teaspoons of sugar, and we need a three quarter teaspoon, three fourth teaspoon, which I think we brought. Oh, we didn't, but what could we, for three fourths, if I have this, which is one, it's not a quarter. You're right. This is a double of a quarter. It's a half. So if I have a half and a quarter, we can use that for our three quarters, right? So we'll do the half teaspoon of salt. What? And quarter teaspoon of salt. And that will give us our three quarter teaspoon of salt. We need one egg. I know that is one of your favorite things to do, Mia. Would you like to crack the egg? Do you guys like cracking eggs? I bet. It's a pretty satisfying experience. Your hands get a little messy, but that is okay. And then we're going to do one. Well, first, should we check if there's any shells? Good idea. Nope, no shells. Okay, so now we need to add one cup of flour, which is not the total amount of flour, but is the amount we're supposed to add it at this point. Huh? Here we go. Okay, so go ahead and beat that until it's smooth. Rob, gotta be careful, so don't if it falls out. Oh, good idea. So as you beat that, we're gonna make sure that we have ready the rest of our flour, which is a quarter to a, a third, well, a quarter to two thirds cup more flour. So we'll start with, actually a half to two thirds more. So let's just start with a half. Is it smooth or not yet? Okay. It's Do you guys have your flour going at home too? I hope you're enjoying baking. It's gonna smell really good in our houses soon. Yeah. Okay, is it good? Yeah. All right, so I think we can add a half more and we wanna make sure now that it turns into a smooth, soft dough, it says. Once it's a soft dough, while Mia finishes that up, I'm gonna get our surfaces ready. We are going to, actually, you know what? I'll just do one surface for now. We'll break it in half a little later. We are gonna get our surface ready. It's floured. So it doesn't stick, right? Exactly, so it doesn't stick. And then... Do we have another spoon to get this one? Yeah, go this? ahead, sure. Okay, get ready to use your hands, your yadaim. Here we go. All right, can we turn that on to the floured board now? Pretty sure. Okay, and here we go. Once we put that on there, we are gonna all spend six to eight minutes, six to eight dot coat to knead this so that it all comes nicely together. Yeah. So let's start together, and then we're gonna meet up with you guys again in six to eight minutes. So this is how we knead. We kind of use our hands our fingers. Like slime. Like slime, if you, yes, if you like to make slime, it is similar to how you would knead your slime together. And you wanna go for six to eight minutes to make sure, would you like a turn? Sure. To make sure that it all comes together nicely. We'll see you in six to eight minutes. Okay. So it's been six to eight minutes. We hope yours also looks fully kneaded together, right? Yeah. We spent a lot of time kneading it. Now we have to coat a bowl with spray to make sure that it doesn't stick. We're gonna put it in there. We're then gonna turn the challah and coat the other side to make sure that all it of it is coated. Sticky. Right, so it doesn't get sticky. We wet a dish towel. This recipe doesn't actually say to wet it, but we've done this before and you wanna wet it just so that when you cover it, it doesn't it stick to the dish stick. towel, right? So we're gonna cover our challah. Maybe you can get a shot of that so they can see. We're gonna cover our challah with the wet dish towel. It's supposed to stay in a warm place or room temperature. We can just kind of leave it inside or actually, because if you live in a, a warm place, we live in Florida, 
we could put it outside and we're gonna let it sit for an hour or until your dough doubles in size. It's and then we'll get see you back here. It is gonna get bigger. All right, we'll see you back here in an hour. Okay, we hope you guys had a great hour. Well, I sure did. I went swimming. Awesome. What did you all do for your hour while your dough was hopefully rising? Our dough did rise. We're not positive it doubled in size. It is a pretty mini challah, but here we are. We're supposed to now punch it down. Would you like to punch it a little bit? Okay, looks pretty well punched over there. What do you think? Did you punch yours? Get out that aggression from being in those houses. Okay, now we're gonna turn it over onto a floured surface. Mm -hmm. And at this point, we're supposed to um, split it. it into three ropes so that we can braid it. But since we're doing two challahs, shte chalot, we're gonna cut ours approximately in half, right? Okay, yeah. and now we're gonna break each of those into three ropes. So you can either break it with your hands, okay. you can cut it with a knife if you have a grown-up with you or a grown-up okays it. And then I'm gonna to start to make mine into ropes while Mia I cuts hers. Cut you don't break it. You make them like long snakes. There we go, we're gonna roll those out. The desert, roll. the Israelites probably passed lots of snakes. They might have in the desert. Okay, and while I'm going to be braiding them after Mia makes her ropes, she's actually going to show you how to braid on a fun new activity we just created to put into Lev Children's Museum once this whole thing's over and we can be back <laughs> hanging out and playing in there. Um, and that is a braiding activity that looks like the braids of a hala out of stockings and filler that you can use for all different crafts. So Mia's going to show you how to braid on there. And if you know how to braid people's hair, then this is going to be easy for you. That is true. So I'm going to start to braid this one. And then Mia will show you on the other. I'm pinching the ends together so that it stays together. And then I'm going to take one side, put it over the middle. Take one side, put it over the other middle. I think Mia's ready to show you on the other one. And I'm going to keep braiding this one. So what you're going to do uh -huh. is this is together. And you have your mm -hmm. three, and you're going to take one side and put it over the middle. Then that comes in the middle. Then you're going to take the other side and put that in the middle. Then you're going to take this side, put it in the middle, take this side, and put it in the middle. Awesome. It looks like a challah. It does look like a challah. And you know what we have to do that we can't do on that activity? We have to pinch the ends of the bottom part too yeah. so that they stay together. And now I'm going to spray the baking surface that we're going to... Put it on too. I realized that also we did forget to put the um, chocolate chips into Mia's. So Mia, you can, you can um, actually just look, we'll do it together. Um, why don't you go wash your hands from touching the other activity yeah. while I start this part. We're gonna stick some chocolate chips into the ropes. We could have also put them in before we split it into three, but you can always adjust. There's not usually something you do that you can't fix by doing it a different way. So we're just going to stick these chocolate chips in. We can even top it later after it rises again with some more chocolate chips or with some cinnamon sugar. There's all different ways you can do this. And really, it's all going to taste great no matter what because the ingredients are so yummy. It almost looks like lots of mini humantaschen shoved together. Did you just eat some humantaschen? in the holiday that just passed? What was that holiday? Mia, do you remember what holiday just passed? Yeah. What was it called? It was, wait, Purim. Yes. Well, we just well it was Shabbat and then Purim. That's true. Okay, so now Mia, if you'd like to braid those, we'll save these maybe okay. for the top. Go ahead. And I don't know how to braid hair, but when I made holiday, it taught me how to braid hair. Okay, go ahead. That's okay, I'll pinch it a little more for you while you braid. This one's much harder than the one up there. Yeah, well, we want to make it nice and tight. Great job. All right, up. these look yummy. Over. And then she's going to pinch her bottoms. And bottom of her challah. That's good. Awesome, and you want to move it onto the baking sheet? You. 
Oh, you want me to? Sure. Okay. We're going to move it on to there, and then we need to cover it for another 45 minutes or so to let it rise. So we're going to take back our cover. Actually, I think we're going to use a dry one this time just so the wet doesn't get into all our ingredients. Um, so we're going to go and get that. We're going to let ours rise for 45 minutes while you let yours rise for 45 minutes, and we will meet back here to put it into our oven. So make sure you preheat your oven while your um, challah is rising right near the end of it to 350 degrees, and we'll see you soon. I hope you guys had a good 45 minutes while your challah was rising. We sure did. We went on a bike ride. That was great. It's good to get some fresh air. Okay, so now let's see how our challah looks. I hope it's risen. Ooh. Okay, um, it has risen. We made sure to wash our hands again, rising. right? Because we're going to be, it has risen. Oh. It does sound like maybe it should say risen, <laughs> but it's risen. Anyway, um, we washed our hands again, right? So we made sure yeah. we were ready to finish the Yeah, the, while I was washing baking. my hands, I realized you could also sing the Shema while you washed your hands. That's true. That's about 20 seconds. It probably is, and if it's not, you could slow it down, yeah. sing it twice. Anyway, okay, so we're going to uh, crack another egg because we need part of that egg to put on top of the challah. Do you know the Hebrew word for egg while you're cracking that? Uh, no. So the Hebrew word for egg is beitzah. Beitzah, egg. We put a beitzah on the Seder plate for another big holiday yeah. that's coming up, actually. Which holiday is that? Passover. Yes, Passover. Okay, so we are and going to take... And don't use the yeast. Um, that is where we do not use the yeast. That's good. Uh, okay, you know what? We forgot... Again, a fork or spoon. So do you think you could beat the egg with that? Yes, I can. We are going to mix uh, a tablespoon, I believe, of egg. Okay. Yes, a tablespoon of egg. In with a quarter teaspoon of cold water. So small. Do you all remember how to say water in Hebrew? We learned it on our Teva walk. Yeah. Maim! You're right. Thank you. And if we want to say cold water... We also learned the word for cold on our Teva walk, which was car. So we would say maim car, cold water. Okay, so this. And in Hebrew, you always flip the words or the sentence. The noun and, and the adjective. The opposite way. Correct, correct, very good. Okay, so you're going to take so. two of those because those are half tablespoons. Uh, might be a little more. Let's see if we can get it deeper there. Uh -huh. uh, that's not working. Here, let's pour it into that. Here, I'll hold it. Okay. okay, you can hold it. Ready? Okay, so put... Oh, oh you want to hold that? Okay, and do one more. Perfect. Okay, perfect. Ooh. And now, <laughs> we're going to mix that together. And that is going to be what we coat the top of our... Hala. Yep, our shtei with. So if you'd like to paint them, it's like painting. It's another form of art. Okay, and then after Mia brushes the top, we're going to decide what to put on top of our challah before we put it in to the oven. Our oven's been preheating for the last few minutes of our 45 minutes. 350 degrees. At 350 degrees, thank you for the reminder. <laughs> okay, make sure you coat it nicely so it's nice and shiny, perfect. <laughs> and we could stick a little bit extra chocolate on top and chocolate in Hebrew, much like mango and mango, is very similar, right? Chocolate in Hebrew is chocolat, chocolat. So we could stick a little extra and, chocolat on and top. And Israeli chocolat is really, really, really oh, good. Oh, it definitely is really good. Okay. And is there anything else you want to put on top of your chocolate chip kawa? Cinnamon sugar to add it. Perfect. Extra sweetness. Uh, I might need help. I, don't I want think the you can food. do it. Just sprinkle it on. And wow. I am going to add... Uh, some sesame seeds onto my more savory challah that doesn't have so much sweetness on it. Yeah, sesame seeds taste really good. They do. Okay, I think we're ready. So let me come around the front here. Now, we have, that's, you have to pull it out. Um, we are going to put it into our little mini lev oven. It's really... And that is hot. Careful, <laughs> the doors are hot. Okay, now because we broke ours in half, it says to bake it for 20 to 25 minutes. We're going to actually check it 
in about 10 or 15, just in case it needs less time. And we will see you when it's ready to come out of the oven. I can't wait to hear how good your house smells. We'll see you soon. Shababa, 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 shabbat shalom is the day of rest. Shabbat shalom is the day I like best. Shabbat shalom is the day of rest. Shabbat. Hey, so ours really did only take about 15 minutes because they were so much smaller. We even probably could have taken it out another few minutes before. It depends if you like yours kind of soft and gooey or a little crispier. So it's always good to check while the um, food is in the oven to see what's going on with it. Yeah. So ours smell really good, don't they? Yeah. How do yours smell? Does your house smell delicious? Does uh, it smell like it's about to be Shabbat later? Mmm. I cannot wait to taste these at our Shabbat meal tonight. Mm -hmm. How about you? I'm so excited, I can't wait. All right, well we can't wait to see you. Now this is a little bit different. On Sunday, our virtual interactive is going to be on Facebook Live. So we want you to be there with us when we do a scavenger hunt inside Lev's tiny home, inside Lev Children's Museum. So come on onto our Facebook page, Sunday at 11 a.m. and get ready for a scavenger hunt with us. Until then, lehitrot haverim. See you soon, friends.